Good afternoon, Tank. How you doing? All is well. What's up with my tolos? <laughs> hey, man. They love that. Uh, yes, everything is well. You know, to be 1-0 and and going up against the Giants, a team that you've had a, a lot of success against over your career. How are you feeling this week? Yeah, we won and won, but it's a that's a good way to put it. Um, put it in perspective. You know, moving on to the next game. Um, you know, it's a great opportunity to, to get better as a team, as a unit, uh, defense and unit, and you know, also uh, come out two and one. Yeah, that would be nice. Now, before we talk about what needs to happen for that, we were all saying what happened on that nineteen play drive. You you guys just destroyed the Bengals pretty much for four quarters other than that nine minutes. What was it that that allowed them to get going and have that outlier drive on you? Uh, I, I would say uh, the penalty we had on fourth down, uh, that punt situation, mm-hmm. uh, we should have been off the field, you know, uh, small mistake, you know, but, you know, it's huge and, you know, that, that time, of, time of the game, you know, so uh, I feel like that was one of the reasons, but also uh, – you know, once once you hit the 50, the playbook opens back up, so you don't know if you're mm-hmm. going to get a run or a pass. And, you know, I feel like that's what, what the case was. Are you nervous out there about the penalties? How, how is that right now as a player, considering what happened last year in, in the first couple of games? Oh, no. Um, you know, I mean, if you turn down your hits, then they possibly going to score a touchdown. So I say, you know um, – you have to live, live with, live by the gun, die by the gun. You're gonna have to take your shot, basically. All right. Hey, I, I was gonna ask you this, Demarcus. How many, how many times did AD in the film room the next day when he was showing everybody the tape point you out for all your hustle plays that you made? I, I I'll tell you what, I have never seen. I mean, but that's that's your game. I, I totally mm-hmm. get that's your game. But how many times did you get pointed out for like for the, like the young guys to see the effort that you were given on some of those run plays, sidelines and sidelines, the way you were playing. Yeah, um, I feel like, uh, you know, that's the way our coaches, uh, you know, teach us how to play the game. Um, But also, you know, as a leader, um, I feel like, you know, it's my duty and my job, you know, to sit here and be an example and, and, you know, make those plays down the field and, you know, be running to the ball all the time. Because, you know, if it start up top, um, you know, the rest of the team should follow. All right, Tank, we're headed to New York, taking on the Giants division rival. It's always an important game. I'm curious, from a road environment standpoint, from a hostility standpoint, New York, where does that rank amongst the division? Oh, man, um, you know, love New York. Uh, you know, it's great energy playing on the road, uh, especially a division rival. Um, you know, I don't feel like, you know, this This is really what the game of football is about and, you know, being in these type of rivalries. You know, that don't happen years before us, and um, now we get to put our mark on it. Tank, as you, we, we look at the Giants, and they're, they're 2-0, and and you know, with a whole new group of coaching staff and everything like that, though. But they still, Daniel Jones, and he still has that ability to run the football. It looked like to me watching their games that there was that, that, that thought of maybe the read option stuff. And as a defensive end, is it is it so important to play with your eyes and the discipline this week when you got a guy that runs the ball like that? Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's discipline every week. Uh, but I feel like those are the fundamentals that you learn, you know, throughout your years playing football and throughout training camp uh, with the system that you're in. And, you know, the system that I am, I'm in with DQ – uh, I feel like, you know, all that goes out in the window because we have speed everywhere. And it's hard to just, you know, sit down on a DN. And now you might have Micah, a linebacker out there. So, you know, you never know what you're going to get. You know, uh, uh, two years ago, you had that strip sack on on Jones, Anthony Brown. He picked it up and ran it in. Is that your favorite play you've ever made against the Giants or does another one stand out? Uh, yeah, man, I mean... You know, I've I been playing against the Giants for the last eight years, and, you know, I had, you know, some good plays against them throughout Seven my sacks you've had against those guys. Oh, yeah. So you can't forget about big brother Eli. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you miss him? <laughs> yeah, that's my guy. That's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but the Eagles is uh, – or excuse me, Giants fan compared to, like, Eagles fan. Is there a clear difference in hostility there? You talking about through the fan? Yeah, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. yeah, the fans, the, the road environment. Uh, absolutely. It's it's totally different environment, you know. Um I mean, shoot, even for Washington, you know, uh, I ain't never seen that many cowboy fans in a different city, especially a, a rival city, you know, like Washington. So yeah. um 
I mean, you know, I mean, it's different atmospheres everywhere, you know, especially the Eagles. And, you know, I mean, that's a great opportunity, you know, to go up there, you know, and, you know, disappoint their fans too. Yeah, I was at a tailgate in in Washington and these Cowboys fans took over this parking lot. They had this <laughs> DJ asking, what does the D.C. stand for? And they were just hollering, Dallas Cowboys. And that was pretty dang intense. i tell you that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and the Cowboy fans travel real nice. Which it's, it's it's especially when you start to talk about the division is the, those division games, you know, Demarcus. Is that something? It's that's like does that? I know you play at a high level all the time, but is do you even get up even more for those division games? Uh, I wouldn't say get up anymore. I don't think you know, especially in this game, you can get too high or too low. Um, sure, you know, you have to stay neutral, stay focused, and you know, um, determined to you know reach your goal and. You know, with the division games, I feel like, you know, I mean, those are the games that, you know, prove if you're going to be in the playoffs this year or not. And, you know, if you win your division, um, you got a higher chance to, you know, make it to the playoffs. So um, that's why I feel like it's more important on those games. It's Demarcus Lawrence here with you on the fan. So, uh, yeah, Micah Parsons off to a pretty good start there in the, in the sack category tank. Is this a good good matchup for you to make up some ground there? And uh, I don't think you can let him get too much farther ahead. Yeah, man. Um, you know, he took off so fast. Uh, I don't feel like there's no, you know, stopping him now. But, you know, it's a, it's definitely a great opportunity for me to, you know, catch up for sure. Hey, there was a report this week on uh, part of why Dan Quinn stayed with the Cowboys, even though teams were trying to make him a head coach, is he didn't want anybody else coaching this defense because he he knew how good it could be. How special is Dan Quinn for you guys? And, and how good are we talking here, Tank? Oh, man, he's great, um, you know, and that's much respect to, you know, DQ, you know, for staying with us and, you know, helping us continue to grow each and every day. But, um, I mean, no question, man, uh, the sky is not the limit for this defense. Um, I feel like, you know, our communication is getting better each and every day. Um, our, our bond together is getting better. And, you know, um, the system is designed, you know, just for, you know, the type of guys that we have. So, um, I feel like it's a perfect match, and, you know, only time time will tell. I don't know if you saw it today, uh, uh, but uh, Jerry Jones said he would like a quarterback controversy if Cooper Rush played incredibly well. I've always thought teams would want to avoid a quarterback controversy. <laughs> what, what do you think about that? <laughs> Ain't no telling what Jerry <laughs> meant by that. Um, you know, um, basically probably trying to keep y'all on y'all toes. <laughs> sure. That. He did that. Yeah. Hey, Tank, you know, you, you mentioned about the, the, the defense and how it's schemed to you guys and stuff. It, it's got to be a lot of fun for a guy like yourself that can play multiple positions and multiple spots to come in every week and, and have a different type of a game plan. Some days you're, you're, you, know, you might play that three. Other times you play the end or move you around. It, 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 talk about that and just when you, when you get that game plan, how excited you are to see, you know, what DQ has for you guys that week. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh... You know, I feel like it uh, brings out my personality, uh, being able to move around and, you know, uh, go against those different matchups and things like that. But also, uh, you know, get an offense different looks. Um, you know, it's hard to, you know, sit here and study one person all week long. And then next thing you know, you don't get to see him until, you know, one or two times a game. You know, so, uh, I mean, I feel like, you know, it gives us so many more opportunities to make plays. Help us out, Tank. How do you know when you need to take Jerry seriously? <laughs> uh, I mean, when he gives you a serious answer, you know. Uh, I, I feel like, you know, that answer when, you know, serious. I mean, I feel like, you know, he probably said it in a joking manner. Uh, but you never know. Uh, we're always out here, you know, competing and, you know, working hard, you know, for our job. So, you never know. <laughs> Tank, I'm curious, uh, all of you guys in that locker room, uh, a handful of you have some pretty fun side hustles and other business ventures that, that you participate in. And I'm curious, how much conversing do you do about that? Because I just learned one about Trayvon Diggs that I want to discuss with you here in a minute. But I, I don't know how much, like I know Danucci's got his Dallas brand that he's doing. I don't know how much of this stuff you guys really like discuss with each other. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know, you know, what type of conversations the other guys have, but uh yeah, me and the D line definitely, you know, discuss it, you know, when we have a long time in our meeting rooms and stuff. Okay, so are you familiar with uh Trayvon Diggs' underwear? <laughs> 
Yeah, man, he got it all on Instagram and everything. <laughs> okay, so is he trying to get the whole team rocking? You know what it's called, right? No, nah, what, what what it's called? It's called Sax Underwear. Sax? Sax, uh, which I think is perfect for a guy like you, uh, who's a, who's a kind of a sack artist, sack master. Uh, yeah, so absolutely. it makes sense for the D line and the pass rushers to wear these things. But yeah, Trayvon Diggs is flaunting around the uh, the Sax Underwear. Has he been trying to coax you into putting these things on? No, man. Maybe he's trying to wait for a Christmas present or something. That'd <laughs> <laughs> be what, good for all of us. What what type of – are we – Tank, are we a boxer's guy or are we a briefs guy? Uh, definitely a briefs. Definitely briefs. Okay, yeah. now what about like the game day attire? Where do we go from an undergarment standpoint? Is it like the girdle, like a, like a kind of a tights situation? Yeah, uh, just probably compression shorts. Now, is there is, – is the is the jock strap still alive <laughs> in the NFL or have we done away with that? Uh – no, nah, most definitely it's it's still alive. Um, some guys play some positions where you know it can get a little dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Tank, do we have any whitey tidy guys on the Cowboys team right now? Uh, whitey tidy, I don't know, man. I ain't in, I ain't in the locker room looking at butts like that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, fair enough, fair enough. But I, I there's it would be it'd be funny. It'd be kind of comical if you have one of these guys walking around in the uh, in the whitey tighties. I'm sure. I mean, it's it's just one of those deals. If you see whitey tighties, there's, there's a double there's a double take that that goes down there. No, I don't think these boys clean enough to wear whitey tighties. <laughs> <laughs> wow, fair enough. Been a couple of decades since we've seen those in an NFL locker room. Thank you so much, uh, Tank. Thanks for checking in with the Tolos. Give those Giants hell. We'll be pulling for you. Uh, most definitely. Tolos.